That right there is the first Southwest plane to land here at Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport. I'm Cody Boyer here in Belgrade with the story and two men behind the wheel with an even more unique one bringing back home. Memorial Day weekend is coming up, so what are the local gas stations like? Are they filled with people or is the pandemic keeping travelers away? I'm Annie Johnson and I'll let you know coming up. A gorgeous morning shaping up here ahead of a gorgeous weekend. It is your Friday edition. Yes, it is. Of Montana this morning, and we have been looking forward to this all week long. Uh, I'm going to correct Annie. She says the uh, weekend is upcoming. I'm going to say it's here. It is right here. now out it here on here. the patio. 50 I, degrees. I start saying happy, happy Friday. We made it to the weekend at like 9 a.m. on Fridays. There and you people go. Look at me, but hey, we can. So. There you go. That's it. It's going to be a nice one, too. We do have some wind to talk about, though, Holly. Take a look outside right now. Thanks to some clouds. Temperatures in the 40s and 50s, 33 in West Yellowstone, 46 in Ennis. The breezes are already starting to blow. We'll talk more about that coming up in a little bit. Meantime, your planner for today, we're going to warm it up into the mid 60s for the Bozeman area. Less wind in Bozeman than in Butte. We're talking maybe 30, 40 mile an hour gusts possible near 60 degrees on your Friday and then it just gets better and better as the weekend unfolds. I'll have details of that Holly in about 10 minutes. Thank you Jet. Senator John Tester is urging a path of common sense as debate is renewed over management of wolves in the northern Rockies. We were there in 1995 when 31 wolves were brought into Yellowstone National Park to be released with an additional pack in the mountains of central Idaho. The growing population meant wolves were taken off the endangered species list in 2009. But the dispute is resurfacing after the Idaho and Montana legislatures passed bills Conservation groups say could bring removal above to 90% of wolf populations. Tuesday, those groups called on the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to restore protection. Some have criticized Senator John Tester for writing the legislation that led to delisting, but he told us in a recent interview the step was taken because the populations had recovered. Now, if in fact uh, people start doing some stuff that puts them back into a situation where they're put back on the endangered species list. We're back where we were 10 years ago. And, and I think we need to be smart. Uh, wolves, they're at the top of the food chain. They need to be uh, managed. That doesn't need, mean they need to be eradicated. Because if we get to that point, they get back on the endangered species list, and we're back to where we were before we got them off that list. In addition to, quote, a little common sense, Tester says he believes it also will take a look at science and managing the science guidelines. He says that's critically important. Well, 633 now, another milestone is set at Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport with the first Southwest Airlines flight for the entire state. That first flight also flew in a unique story of friendship. MTN's Cody Boyer was on the tarmac when that flight landed and has the story. It was a reception here at Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport that the director described as a victory, not just for the airport, but for the surrounding area. That blue, yellow, and red plane there at the end of the gate, that is the first Southwest Airline plane to land here at Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport. Talking with Brian Springer, the director of the airport, he does tell me and confirm that this is one of the fastest growing airports in the entire country. With Southwest addition here as well, now there are two flights until early Early June, at least, will they upgrade to four to Bozeman and Denver and Bozeman and Las Vegas. According to Springer, this flight makes a big difference to this airport. More than a decade in the making, uh, trying to get southwest to Montana. We're happy to have them here in Bozeman. Now, representatives included Montana State University as well as the cheer squad here. They were greeting the plane for a special reason. Behind that cockpit, holding those flags out of those windows, were two MSU grads with quite the story and history of their own. We are extremely excited to welcome Southwest Airlines here to Montana. It's been a dream for both of us for years. Sometimes I didn't think it would ever happen, but I guess sometimes dreams do come true. A dream involving parallel lives and the same tarmac. For Captain Dan Moe and First Officer Kirk Cluen, it's almost like looking in the mirror seven years apart. It just feels fantastic. It's kind of been full circle for us. We both learned to fly out here at this airport. 
And then we both did our first solo flights in the mid 80s out here on the same runway. Uh, it's just like a homecoming in a sense. A homecoming for both. Their lives leading to this moment with a Montana flag and an MSU flag flying out of their open windows on the runway. Well, you just have to hear it from them. Dan and I found out that uh, we flew together several years ago and Dan's wife also flies here as a pilot. It was amazing. My wife first flew with Kurt and she goes, you got to meet this guy. He's from Bozeman. I'm like, what? We got to talking and we realized that we grew up four blocks apart in Bozeman and we went all to the same schools. We graduated from Bozeman High, seven years apart. But wait, there's more. Uh, we went to MSU, both graduated from MSU and we both graduated from uh, ROTC up there and got commissioned in the Air Force. Even in the same detachment, while Dan served in Desert Storm, Kurt, Iraqi Freedom, all tying both Kurt and Dan to the same airfield nearly 40 years ago. We were both Eagle Scouts in town and so pretty much everything we did in, in town, we did exactly the same just over a seven year period and we never knew each other here in town. Very few people you meet that you go through a, a say a whole career and you end up at the same place flying for the same company with the same interests same background a little weird but uh, you know <laughs> it all works out and look we're both back here Kurt adds it's a message spread your wings and it might be the best way to catch the wind and fly sometimes we have to go out and make our way in the world and then come back to town and, and uh, if this is the place you want to be and this it's the only place I want to be you hope you dream a little bit uh, but really to see it come out on a great day great weather People uh, represent our great company. It's the uh, best thing out there. At Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport, Cody Boyer, MTN News. Well, American air travel is making a comeback this Memorial Day weekend. 60% more Americans are expected to travel compared to this time last year. The airline industry is also expanding. Two new carriers have launched during the pandemic. CBS's Errol Barrett has more. If you're one of the more than 37 million Americans expected to travel this Memorial Day weekend, you now have a few new cost-effective options at your disposal. $19 flight <laughs> doesn't really get any cheaper than that. We're trying to go out there and give customers choice. That's how CEO Andrew Levy is boosting demand for his new low-cost airline. We have wonderful people, great low fares, and uh, yeah, we're just excited to uh, be out in the marketplace. Avilo's hub is based in Burbank, California, and currently services 11 small airports. There may be other ways to get to these airports in the western U.S., maybe through LAX, maybe through a connection, but we're trying to offer something that's different to the customer, to the traveling public. Last year, due to the pandemic, the airline industry suffered more than $370 billion in losses. That led Boeing CEO to declare at least one airline would be pushed out of business. Instead, two new ones sprung up, Avilo and Breeze Airways, with goals to tackle smaller airports across the country. Welcome to Breeze, everybody. Breeze CEO David Neeleman is also testing a new market. 95% of the routes on its network have new non-stop service, including from Hartford to Columbus and Providence to Pittsburgh. Its fares run as low as $39. The U.S. airline industry is recovering. It is recovering faster and better than many expected. Henry Hardevel is an airline travel analyst and says these new airlines will help drive competition. These are both budget-focused airlines, which means they'll bring more low-fare seats, to more communities, and that helps make air travel more accessible and affordable for everybody. Now, while this weekend will be a boom for small carriers, it is an open question as to if there are enough air travelers to sustain them long term. The last U.S. carrier to launch, Virgin America, folded back in 2018. Errol Barnett, CBS News, New York. For a lot of people, the Memorial Day holiday marks the beginning of summer and the beginning of tourism season. I think a good Memorial Day weekend with travelers traveling through the Bozeman and, and Butte areas um, will indicate that we can expect a strong summer for tourism. Which helps both economies. While other parts of the country are experiencing shortages and increased prices, you won't find that here. Our gas prices in the Bozeman and Butte market are a little under $2.90 a gallon. Nationally, the price is a little over $3. Which had some driving to fill up ahead of the weekend. I got gas in my other car yesterday, filled it up, and then I'm filling this one up in anticipation that the price Prices will go up, say, tomorrow and over the weekend. So I figured I'd get in just in case. And he wasn't the only one filling up with the lower prices. We're going to um, 
my husband and my ranch um, north of Sheridan, Wyoming for the weekend. And with the warmer temperatures and extended weekend, a lot of travelers say it could not have been a better time. That's yeah, a pretty convenient weekend for everybody. All the kids have time off school. My sister's a teacher actually, and so she just finished school. So it's just a perfect time for everybody to get together. But it's also the perfect time to remember what the holiday is for. I think people should think hard during this day as well as in November and not just look at it as a four day vacation, but as a celebration of all the sacrifices that others have given in order to provide the freedom for our country. And if they pass the cemetery with a bunch of flags, if they understand why, those flags are there. Memorial Day isn't actually until Monday, May 31st. Reporting in Bozeman, Annie really? Johnson, MTN News. We've got, we've got more of Montana this morning ahead here, including this story. The dry spring is already leading to wildfires coming up. See the damage causing people in Arizona to flee their homes. But first, here's a look at what's ahead at 7 on CBS This Morning. Good morning ahead on CBS This Morning. After more than a year of isolation, see how Americans are finally planning to get away and embrace the Memorial Day holiday. Plus, find out if Mother Nature will put a damper on the celebration. Also, while many will hit the beach this weekend, see new drone video of a booming population of sharks swimming very close to people, but displaying behavior you might not expect. And first on CBS This Morning, Hall of Famer and NFL Today analyst Bill Cower on his new memoir. He'll discuss life lessons and how we can all reach our potential. We'll see you at 7.